Hello, 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 everyone. It's Darcy. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Ox Eagle Arise. Hey, 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 hey. I'm so excited for these next set of videos that are dropping. There's some dropping this week. There's some dropping next week. They're all already recorded. They're just going to drop, 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 drop. We're trying to go with a new schedule, but we are so excited. We were trying to move on, guys. Remember? Did you guys catch that one on idolatry, the pre, the pre-show to idolatry? Did you guys see that? If not, make sure you go to all of our platforms, check it out. The link is there and everything is on Rumble. No more of the censorship. We're on Rumble. So check us out. The link will be in the description for this video. But then as we're trying to move forward, Holy Spirit said, we're not done with hurt, pain, and trauma. And I said, what? I was like, what do you mean? And then all this stuff started happening. Y'all, you got to catch these videos that are coming out this week. You're going to love what's about to happen. You're going to love what's going to come forth. And so without further ado, we are going to continue on. We are not stopping with hurt, pain, and trauma as of yet. The Holy Spirit is not done moving. And they highlighted even more people who need to share their testimony. More people need to talk about how God has seen them through. Maybe they've already overcome. Maybe they're in the process of overcoming. Either way, it's going to be phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. And so I am so excited to have one of our next interviewees, one of our next guests for this My Story virtual tour, how I overcame generational curses and bondages. Centering in on the topic of hurt, pain, and trauma, we have a young lady, a dynamic young lady who's going to share her testimony with us. This is Myra, y'all. Hey! Hello, lady. Hello, everyone. I am so excited that you agreed to do this interview because this these topics are so vast. It's like we could not, it would take us a lifetime to really cover every little thing that would go into hurt, pain, and trauma. I mean, trauma alone is just, wow, powerful. Yeah. And pain and hurt, it's an individual experience. What one person can just drive right through, someone else might struggle through. And so I just love that God is like, no, we need to illuminate this more. I love that he says, this is not done. And there's more people who need to talk about what I'm doing and where I'm taking them. And I love that he impressed upon your heart to join us, to share part of your testimony with us. And so I want to just pause. I want to take a step back and I want to allow you to share what God placed on your heart. What about hurt, pain, and trauma? What stood out to you when you heard those topics? Um, I really wanted to discuss my experience from switching from a Baptist church to a, a prophetic church. Mm. You're hitting a huge topic, and I know you're going to do so much justice to it. How many people can uh, relate? How many people can relate to going from one denomination to another? How many people can go? I mean, it could be a school, it, it could be a job. The, the subject of change, going from one to another. I am so excited, and I know everyone else is so excited to hear about your experience from moving from a Baptist church to a prophetic church. Please share with us, what was that like for you? My experience at a Baptist church was kind of like, you know, you have, you carve out time for God on Sunday, and then like, you just live your life however you want to, but all the other six days of the week. And even on Sundays, it would just be like the three hours we'd be at church and then you just do whatever which you want to, whatever else you want to do after that. But then going to a prophetic church, the lifestyle choices, like how we live, how I lived really, it just changed. Like you're like, oh, well, we can't really listen to this music anymore or we can't go to see this movie after church or in general you know because it doesn't really fit how god wants us to live yeah so those changes kind of just like a shock to my system almost you know it's just like whoa i've been living like this for like how many years and it's just like all of a sudden we can't live like that anymore it's just like Come on. I couldn't believe it, you know? 
I totally get it. I totally get it. As someone who's had very similar experiences, it's like a culture shock. It's like moving to a different country. <laughs> the haunted house is gone. The horror movie is gone. The secular music gone. Even, um, you know, you try to go certain places, can't do that anymore. The music festivals, the, yeah. the, the alcohol this, the, the party that, gone. Just all Even some gone. events your families may have, you can't oh do it. Oh my gosh. And then limiting, knowing, oh, I can show up between these hours, but after these yeah. hours, I have to go because yeah. <laughs> I know what's about to happen. <laughs> yes oh my gosh it's it's so real it's so real and then the friendships I think that was the hardest part for me what do you think definitely friendships because it's just like how do I say this it's just like how do I explain to my friends like the things we could have did like before quarantine hit when we see each other again it's just like oh well you see, I can't really do that anymore. It's just like, or not being able to talk to some people in general, you know? It's just, it was really, it was really hard, yeah. I totally get it. I totally get it. I think I cut over three friends and it's no love lost. Um, not, it's not a bash. It's not a, you're, you're a terrible person. It's just how we used to live. I can't do that anymore. I can't be there in that space anymore. And who God has told me I need to be for him. Our relationship would, would keep me from being who I need to be. And so I have to disconnect myself for purpose. I have to disconnect myself so that I can continue to grow and, and to propel. And, you know, you wish them all the best. You, you pray for them. It's, you know, no love lost. And some relationships end terribly, but mine didn't. I just had to explain that this season of my life is over. So I totally get it. I mean, that was the hardest part. And yeah. when they don't understand, you get those texts the weeks later, months later, like what's yeah. happening right now? Why can't we? And it's just like, you don't get it, but I, I gotta, mm, I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah, I, that's so powerful. And so how did you like the prophetic church? It was interesting at first because, like, I had never experienced it before. It's just, like, like praying in tongues and, you know, like, worship. Like, even, like, for me, worship was a big thing I had to, like, grow into. I'm still trying to grow into it because before, like, I've witnessed people, like, praise dances and all that stuff. But, like, but for me, I would just, like, rock back and forth and just, like, I'd sing along and rock back and forth. But, like, I felt kind of, like, out of place, you know? It's just, like, I didn't feel like my Christian was, like, enough, you know? So good. I love how you said yeah. that. You mm -hmm. just see this new style because it is different. Yeah. You see this new style and it is different. And you're just trying to figure out where do I fit into this? And. Mm -hmm. You know, and do I not have enough Jesus? Why why do they seem like they're so into it? And I'm trying, I'm struggling. Like, I'm changing, like I'm cutting all this stuff out. I'm trying to get better with God and, and learning who the Holy Spirit is and Jesus. Oh. And it's just like and then it's just like I'm seeing all this and it's just like, what am I doing wrong? You know? Come on. They don't teach that. It's like you'll hear the Holy Spirit. But when you go to a prophetic church, it's like, let the Holy Spirit move, let him take you. And you're just like what does that mean? <laughs> so good. I get it. I get it. That's, oh my gosh. So how did it make you feel? Like, how would you say moving from Baptist to prophetic? What was your emotions? What did you experience? I was scared and confused for the most part, because it's just like, I didn't understand why we had to like, like, cut so many things out and switch and and change all this stuff and it's just like up until like a couple a couple months ago it was all fine you know and it's just like what's happening and then like once I got past like the confusion that's when like being scared really set in because it's just like it's a new place and it's just like I don't really understand what's happening and I don't really fit in here and it's just like what do I do like I got really anxious I guess like trying to fit in like I didn't even know what I was trying to fit into you know I totally get it I totally get it um because when I did my switch and I was trying to I always thought I could pray you know I was always the prayer with my other friends and so I get around these people who like 
pray pray it's like a whole nother <laughs> lane of praying and i'm just like oh i don't even want to pray with these people <laughs> i don't it's not like i don't know what i'm talking about right. I, I was just like oh my gosh and then the praying in tongues i'm just i was fascinated i had never heard tongues until i went to a prophetic church never you know speaking tongues and the Oh, like like one or two people that would just like they would just like they would do it but it's just like like yeah. the whole congregation it's just like whoa They're looking at them like oh they just right. you know who are those people you know mm -hmm. but it wasn't yeah. everybody then you get into a whole church and they're all over yep i understand i understand mm -hmm. it is and you're just like Am I, I love how you said that. Am I enough? Do, do, do I have enough God in me to, to fit here? And it's, I love how you didn't get stuck there. So continue, continue telling us. So you're in this prophetic church. How are you feeling now? What's your process? Um, I have my moments where like, I still feel like, I guess like inadequate, mm. but for the most part, I'm over, I'm overcoming it. I'm getting through it. But right now, where I'm at, I think I've realized, like, everyone's walk is different, you know? And it's just, like, someone's experience may be completely different from mine. And that's fine. That was the main thing I had to get through. Like, just because I don't, I'm not experiencing the same thing someone else is, or we're not getting to the same place the same way, that's okay. I'm not doing, like, anything wrong. You know, just because my experiences were different doesn't mean like I did the wrong thing, you know, like that. That was what I really had to process through. Like, I didn't do, like, yes, I've made my mistakes, but like, my walk isn't wrong. You know? Come on. Okay. So it's like, yeah. even though you were shedding some things off, you were saying mm -hmm. you, could, you couldn't do certain things anymore. There's certain people you couldn't hang around. There's certain places you couldn't go you mm -hmm. still were loved you're still valuable you still yeah. matter you're not a lesser christian because you were one way this week and then a couple of weeks later you're in a different spot yeah. as you're growing and evolving you're finding god for yourself in your own lane and not comparing not looking at mm -hmm. the left or the right this is my walk this is my process and yeah we're getting to the same place we, we love god we both love god right. We both want to serve him and please him. But how you are doing it doesn't mean that's how I'm going to do it. And that's okay. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that. Uh, what is one scripture? What is one scripture that you held on to? One that helped you as you're going along this process, evolving and growing. And, and I'm sure it's still a transition because when yeah. you have a denomination and then hit prophetic anything, <laughs> that's a whole <laughs> new lane. What's yep. one that speaks to you. Um, I think one scripture that really helped me was Ecclesiastes 3 1. I can read it for you if you'd like. Yeah, please. Okay. Um it says, There is a time. Oh, yeah, you lost it. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. To me, it it stood out to me because it it stood out to me because um, it signified like transitioning from one thing to another. Like there was a time for this and like in the past, you know, and then like switching from that. Oh my gosh, I lost it. Okay. I lost it. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was just a transitioning. Like there was a time for in one season in my life, there's a time for that. But like there's a now it's time to come out of that in this new season, you yeah. know. No, I feel that. I feel that. Um, it just reminds me of like Abraham. Mm -hmm. How he had to leave his family. He had to go where God told him to go. Uh, you look at Esther. She had to leave her people and went to the palace, but she was put there for a time just such as that. Um, you just look at uh, how, how Jesus had to separate. He had to go into the wilderness. Uh, right after being baptized and how he spent those 40 days and, and 40 nights there. And so it was, it's powerful how, when you have that, you're transitioning into something different, when you're moving into something different and you have to trust God in that process, where are you taking me? What, 
you may not see it for yourself. You may not even understand it. Guess what? You might not even like it. You're like, God, yeah. why are you doing this? Why can't I just stay where I was? Why are you? Yeah. But you trust him in that. You trust him in that. And you just believe in that. Okay, if you're saying I need this, I'm going to just go with it. I'm going to jump both feet in. Um, if you're saying that this is important, then that's fine. And so I love that. I love that verse that was so wise and so mature because there is, there's a season for everything. And learning the seasons is hard. Learning the seasons is hard. Um, being able to discern the seasons, that's hard. And so I love how in your wisdom, like, I mean, young lady, in your wisdom, you're like, God is saying what, where I was, that time is done. Let me move forward into where I need to go now. And I'm going to trust him in it. And I'm going to just go with it. I love it. I love it. That's powerful. That's powerful. And so I think you're very brave. I think you're very courageous. That is a huge switch. I mean, prophetic anything is a switch. <laughs> and so, especially if you don't grow up that way, especially if you're coming, you could be, have been from a different religion uh, versus just another denomination in Christianity. And so I love their boldness, your, cura your courage, your willingness to give yourself grace and, and, and to allow God's grace to wash over you and not to strive and not to feel that you're a failure or that you're not good enough or that someone else is more valuable than you. I love how just the different nuggets you threw out, you threw so much out in what you said, and that was powerful. And I thank you for sharing that with us because hurt, pain, and trauma can come from experiences like that. Say someone transitioned and maybe someone made them feel bad, or maybe they had a negative experience in that transition. They might run away and run back. And so in this hour, I feel like God is calling all of us to a deeper level. God is calling all of us uh, to dive deeper with him and, and to have that relationship with him, uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And so we have to be open to experiences, even if it's scary, even if it doesn't make sense, even if it's not what we would prefer, and just allow God God to guide us and lead us. And so that's great. Um, you're navigating the hurt and the pain of those experiences because not all pain is a bad pain. You know, you're being stretched, yeah. you're being challenged. Mm -hmm. And then the trauma of that, the trauma of that, I mean, come on, come on. You're navigating it with grace and you're navigating it so beautifully. And I love how you said, uh, you're enough. That's what I heard. I'm enough. I'm doing it. It's a day by day process, and that's okay. That's powerful. Is there any last words that you want to share with us? Um, I just want to say thank you for having me on here. You know, it's just, it's been my pleasure to be able to share my story with the viewers and whoever, whoever else may be watching. You know, uh -huh. I just really hope that what I've said can just help someone like wherever they're at in their life, you know, it's just, yeah. I know. I love that. And I think it will. I really do. Um, it'll help others in your age bracket. They're not alone. The emotions you feel with change are not abnormal because it's going to come at different times throughout our life until we're not here anymore. There's going to be a change. It could be middle school to high school, high school to college or tech school. You could go into the military. You could be transitioning to a new job. You could get married. You could have children. I mean, change is just an inevitable part of life, but how we navigate those changes and how we embrace God in those moments, because the enemy will try to guilt us, shame us, make us feel like we failed somewhere or didn't do enough, or why don't you have this? Why can't you be that? But we can't, we can't get stuck in that. We have to trust God in all of our individual processes and not compare. It's okay if Sally, Sue, and John did it that way, but mine is my story and mine is just as valuable as theirs. And as long as we both get to, we all get to the same outcome, that's what matters. We yeah. love God. We want to give him our all. We want to serve him. We want to please him. That's it. Thank you so much for being on here. I feel like your testimony is going to help someone. It's still budding. It's still ongoing. We would love to have you back. We're going to definitely have to check in with you to see how things are going. But it sounds like you've learned a lot already. And you are doing it with so much grace. You're doing it beautifully. So thank you so much for coming on here to share with our listeners, with our viewers, because this is so pivotal. Change happens and hurt 
pain and trauma can come with change, but how we navigate it, how we allow God to wash us and to heal us and to propel us forward in spite of what life brings, that's so pivotal. And then you being a young person, you know, I'm sure the switch was because of a parental decision. And so yeah. you're navigating this with, uh, with just so much beauty and grace. And I'm just so grateful that what God is doing to you. And I know with you just starting, this is just the beginning. You're going to be able to pour out to other young people who may go through another hard transition, a hard switch, and just letting them know that if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, it's not, it may get a little messy. You may get angry sometimes. You may not do everything right, but it's all going to work for the good. Yes. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me on here. Thank you so much. And we will talk again with you soon. Everyone check out our channels. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on IG. We're on TikTok. And we're on Rumble. Come on, guys. Check us out. And we can't wait to check you. Track with us. More videos coming up soon. See ya.